Um, Dame uh, Maria, I believe this is the first time we have been joined in uh, such an endeavour during our time in the uh, House uh, together, and it is a huge privilege to uh, serve under uh, your chairmanship today. Um, I'm extremely grateful to my uh, honourable friend, the member for Carl Shelton and Wallington, uh, for securing this debate, and I congratulate him on the way in which he uh, presented what he had to say to us today. Uh, somewhat similarly to the uh, opposition spokesman, um, the, uh, I should say that I am standing in for the Minister for the Indo-Pacific, my right honourable friend, the member for berwick upon tweed as she is unable to attend today, um, but it is my pleasure to respond uh, on the behalf of the government to uh, the excellent and interesting debate which we have uh, just heard. Um, I'm extremely grateful for the contribution of all honourable members who have spoken uh, today. I will seek uh, to respond to all the points that have been raised, and if uh, I omit any of the points that have been raised, uh, I will, of course, immediately write to honourable members, if that's the case, straight uh, afterwards. Um, there is one point which I want to pick up at the outset, which was made by my honourable friend, um, and it is to do with the British military engagement in uh, Sri Lanka. Um, uh, but the rest of his points I hope to pick up during the course of my uh, remarks. Um, I want to tell him that the British strategy for defence engagement in Sri Lanka focuses primarily on professional military uh, education, strategic le leadership and international uh, development. And to say to him that we continuously monitor the context and viability of the approach to ensure that UK assistance is in line with our values, is consistent with our domestic and international human rights obligations, and assures the process of selecting appropriate personnel for any UK-sponsored uh, training. Um, the, I'm grateful uh, particularly to my honourable friend for uh, Strangford, uh, indeed, who was questioning me just uh, an hour or so ago on issues to do with uh, Hong Kong. Um, and I recognise the specific um, interest and experience he brings to a debate like this because of his ex knowledge and understanding of reconciliation and uh, conflict um, and healing. And uh, I uh, heard him say, and how right he is, that he speaks up always in this house for uh, human rights and indeed for the uh, voiceless. Uh, the Honourable Lady for Mitcham and Morden spoke movingly on behalf of her Tamil constituents, and I will seek to come to uh, at least some of the comments that she made uh, during her remarks. The Honourable Gentleman for uh, Guile and Butte uh, likewise raised important issues from his experience of these matters. And the Honourable Lady who today is speaking for the opposition in this matter uh, for Cardiff North raised a number of points which I will come to, but she asked me two specific questions. The first was about human rights uh, sanctions. And as I think she inferred from what uh, she said, uh, on all such matters, we certainly keep them under review as appropriate, but we do not discuss them in advance, and we would not uh, discuss our thinking either across uh, the, the floor of the House, and she'll not be particularly surprised to hear me say that. Uh, she also, um, secondarily, made the point about the importance of accountability, and I'll, I'll come to some of this in my uh, further remarks, but but I want to be very clear to her that we regard transparency and accountability as a fundamental part of reconciliation. And I will say a bit more about that um, in a moment. Um, Dame Maria, uh, if I turn to the current situation, human rights in Sri Lanka remains a priority for the government, and we monitor closely the situation there and uh, developments. The fact that Sri Lanka is a human rights priority country uh, for the British government reflects our concerns about a range of human rights uh, issues and uh, quite rightly honourable members today have highlighted a number of those concerns and civil society continues to face surveillance, intimidation and harassment by state authorities and those points were eloquently set out uh, during some of the contributions we have heard today. We're, concerned about a trend towards a more constrained civic space 
This includes the use of laws to limit freedoms of expression and assembly, such as the misuse of the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights or the Prevention of Terrorism Act, the PTA, which was referred to earlier. Britain continues to call for the replacement of the draconian PTA with legislation that is consistent with Sri Lanka's international obligations and to uphold a moratorium on the use of the provisions of the PTA. We're also concerned about the Online Safety Act. Recently passed, it has the potential to restrict severely online communication and could potentially criminalise many forms of expressions. And Dame Maria, proposals to strengthen the regulation of NGOs and of broadcast media raises fears of efforts to restrict civic space. Yes, I will. I'm giving way. On the point about the online space, that is encroaching indeed internationally. In fact, here in the United Kingdom, the Tamil Guardian and other Tamil um, publications have faced uh, deplatforming from places like Meta, Facebook, Instagram, for example, from complaints made elsewhere in the world under the auspices of this PTA and other bits of legislation. So can he um, perhaps take away how we can protect the freedoms of Tamils to express themselves freely online when they are outside of the, geogra of the geographical space of the island. Yes, I will, I will certainly uh, take uh, that away as he requests, um, and I hope that some of what I will have to say will assist in um, addressing that particular point. We want to encourage the Sri Lankan government to hold comprehensive consultations with stakeholders and enact amendments to align legislation with Sri Lanka's human rights obligations. Now, as this House acknowledged in a debate, I think in December, uh, Dame uh, Maria, a number of different communities, including Tamils and Muslims, face marginalisation by state authorities. There have been increasing tensions around land, which has sometimes centred around religious sites, such as the most recent incident at a Hindu temple in Vavuniya, these actions and incidents have troubling implications for freedom of religion or belief. There have been reports of state-sponsored settlement of traditional pasture land in Bati Kaloa, which threatens the livelihoods of local farmers. These events have increased the risk of communal tensions and stoked perceptions of forced displacement from traditional Tamil areas in the north and east of Sri Lanka. There have been several incidents Dame Maria, a heavy-handed policing of peaceful protests and commemorations. And the ongoing special police operation, which is ostensibly aimed at combating drug trafficking, has raised serious concerns over arbitrary arrests, seizures of property, and ill treatment in detention. Now, if I turn to what Britain specifically is seeking uh, to do, and that is promoting human rights, reconciliation, and justice and accountability. These are key strands of the UK government's policy towards Sri Lanka. Now, my right honourable friend, the Minister of State for the Indo-Pacific, raises our concerns about the human rights situation in Sri Lanka on a regular basis. When she visited Sri Lanka in October, she raised concerns with the President, the Foreign Minister, and the Justice Minister. She again saw the Sri Lankan Justice Minister well, he was in Britain last week. And when in Sri Lanka, my right honourable friend uh, met the governor of the northern uh, province, Tamil representatives and members of civil society. She raised the need for progress on human rights for all communities in Sri Lanka and the need for justice and accountability for violations and abuses committed during and following the armed conflict. The British government has an £11 million programme that supports human rights and reconciliation in Sri Lanka. We have specific projects and programmes that help tackle the legacy of the conflict, support civil society and democratic processes, promote gender equality and reduce inter-community tensions. And we have been a leading member, Dame Maria, of the core group of countries in the United Nations Human Rights Council, who work to improve human rights, justice and accountability throughout Sri Lanka. And we have worked within the UN human rights system to raise concerns and build international support to strengthen human rights. We used our statement to the UN Human Rights Council on the 4th of March 
to raise our concern on recent legislative developments relating to human rights, reconciliation and civic space. Our statement urged the government of Sri Lanka to ensure meaningful consultation on the proposed Commission for Truth, Unity and Reconciliation. And Britain has stressed the importance, as I mentioned in my early remarks to the Honourable Lady, of transparency, accountability and inclusivity in any process and of building meaningfully on past work and recommendations that address the root causes of conflicts and impunity. The British delegation in the UN Human Rights Council led work on the most recent resolution on Sri Lanka. We remain ready to support Sri Lanka in addressing the UK uh, penned resolution 51 stroke 1. In the resolution, we focused international attention on the human rights situation and shortcomings. We succeeded in renewing the mandate of UN human rights experts to report on these issues and to preserve evidence of abuses and violations. It turns specifically to the point that the Honourable Lady made, committing during the armed conflict so that justice can be pursued. We call upon the government of Sri Lanka to engage constructively with all UN human rights initiatives and to take up the offers of the support available uh, to them. There are, De Maria, some positive signs. We welcome steps taken by the Sri Lankan government to address some of the community grievances and civil society and international community concerns. The release of some disputed lands is a helpful step, as is the release of some long-term PTA Detainees. We welcome the government's initial steps to engage with representatives of the Tamil community on a long sought after political settlement. And we have urged the government to consider further confidence building measures and engagement. And we welcome steps taken by the government of Sri Lanka to improve connectivity between the north and countries in the region, including through regular flights. This should help increase economic opportunities for Tamils and others in these communities. Now, Demir, if I, Maria, if I may conclude on this note, Britain uh, monitors human rights developments in Sri Lanka closely. We welcome the ongoing attentions and contributions of honourable and right honourable members and the spotlight it brings to this issue. We are concerned by the ongoing land disputes the continued harassment and surveillance of civil society and limitations on freedoms of expression, assembly and association, including through recent and proposed legislation. We will continue to urge the Sri Lankan government to adhere to its human rights obligations and fulfil its commitments on transitional justice, legislative reform and taking steps to build trust in its institutions. Our projects and programmes in Sri Lanka will continue to target the drivers of conflict and support improvements in human rights. Ministers and officials will continue to engage with the government and wider society on human rights and transitional uh, justice. And we will remain, De Maria, a leading voice on the international stage, working with civil society and through the United Nations to deliver meaningful human rights improvements for the Tamils and all the people of Sri Lanka. Elliot Coburn to wind up. Thank you, Dame.